magical umbilical my universe is radical introduce a nation to embracing what is factual feminine energy almost mathematical you can really solve my body's infinite and valuable feminine energy balance up the a while back, some theoretical computer scientists and physicists had a really cool idea. What if we were to augment our good old deterministic computer algorithms with a new ability? One that's discussed widely by physicists and philosophers. This new ability I refer to is, of course, randomness. Random number generators. Informally, the ability to roll dice or toss coins. This new ability led to a brand new field that has flourished for many decades, probabilistic computing. Here's a snapshot of some pseudocode that solves the problem of determining whether a number m with, let's say, 10,000 binary digits is a prime. The actual details aren't important. The only thing I want you to notice is that the very first line of code generates a random number, say, by rolling a 2 to the power of 10,000 sided die. Now, of course, you can't actually have a 2 to the power of 10,000 sided die in physical reality, but it's not a problem. Uh, it's equivalent to just flip 10,000 fair coins. And this is perfectly phys feasible physically. You know, just take your $100 bill to the bank, ask for pennies, get flipping. Now, what are the benefits of using randomness to solve algorithmic tasks, particularly ones that don't have anything to do with randomness inherently? Well, one benefit is that it gives you a great speed up for a particular classical number theoretic task, namely computing the primality or compositeness of an n-digit number. With a probabilistic computer, this can be done in roughly n squared steps. So if n is 10,000, that's 100 million steps, which is perfectly fine for an ordinary laptop. You can compare this with the fastest known primality testing algorithm that uses no randomness. This takes roughly n to the power of 6 steps, which would be 10 to the 24 if n is 10,000, and that's completely infeasible. Even 10 to the 24 nanoseconds is over 30 million years. Uh, probabilistic algorithms also give mild speedups for some other computer function type tasks. But indeed, for classical computer function type tasks, one might ask, is that it? Not at all. So what's additionally wonderful about probabilistic computing is that it can be used to solve inherently probabilistic problems, like simulating stochastic systems, or even just complicated deterministic systems, uh, generating synthetic probabilistic data, it also motivates us to study new algorithms for statistical problems. So probabilistic computing is great. Now, a few decades after the introduction of probabilistic computing, history seemed to repeat itself. Uh, some theoretical computer scientists and physicists had a really cool idea. What if we were to augment our good old deterministic computer algorithms with a new ability, one discussed widely by physicists and philosophers? This new ability I refer to is quantum dice. While the ability to manipulate particles at the quantum scale, where new and different laws of probability hold. Adding this ability leads to the idea of quantum computing. Here's a snapshot of some pseudocode, originally described by Peter Shore, that solves the problem of factorizing a number m with, let's say, 100 binary digits. Again, the actual details aren't important. The thing I want you to notice is that the first few lines describe getting hold of, say, 10,000 trapped ions and physically manipulating them to produce what I'll call a quantum die, which is the quantum generalization of a probability source. Turning this code into physical reality is, in principle, possible, but it still remains an enormous practical engineering challenge. Here, for example, is a picture of, I believe, two trapped ions able to be manipulated. Again, you can ask, what are the benefits of using quantum randomness to solve algorithmic tasks? Well, the most famous benefit is the one we just saw. You would get a super great speed up for a particular classical number theoretic task, computing the factorization of an n-digit number. With a quantum computer, this could be done in roughly n squared steps. And you can compare this with the fastest algorithm we know for factorization on a classical computer, which takes exponential in n many steps. Uh, other quantum algorithms, like Grover's algorithm, are known to give you mild speed ups for some other computer function type tasks. But some might say this is, again, all the benefits we know for classical computer function type tasks. So is that it for the usefulness of quantum computers? Well, once again, not at all. A realm of applications I find very exciting is using quantum computers to solve inherently quantum problems, like simulating molecules or other quantum systems, or tackling quantum statistical problems. So the upcoming series of videos will describe some recent advances on such quantum stats problems, in particular, the basic task of learning a quantum state. So what's coming up in the rest of this video series? Well, 
First, I'll tell you what is a quantum die, or more properly, a mixed quantum state. We'll talk about how we can try to learn the quantum probabilities uh, of a quantum die from measurements. We'll then get to somewhat more mathematical topics and see how group theory plays a major role in quantum statistics. And finally, at the end, for the hardcore math enthusiasts, we'll discuss a new and unexplored kind of random matrix.